The United States Navy used to brag that they were zero tolerance on drugs. Ironically, that's also when I learned what to pick for psychedelic mushrooms. I was in the United States Navy during the first Gulf War. I was a CB. There's pictures of me. And I was stationed in Gulfport, Mississippi. The CBC base there. And like I said, the Navy had a zero tolerance of drugs, which unfortunately my favorite drug of choice was weed. But being a natural product, that one would stay in your system for 30 days off just try taking one hit off of one joint. So that's really a no-go unless you got a month leave plan. So you can get high once and go on vacation for a month and no one does that. If you did real drugs though, that only has a shelf life of about three days in your bloodstream and then you could pass a piss test. So a lot of people that liked real drugs would get high on you know, snort a bunch of coke on Friday and be clean come Monday. You know, that wasn't for me, so I drank a lot. You know, because drinking was legal and the Navy okays drinking. We build, we fight, we party all night, as the CB phrase. So, one of the other things is psychedelics. LSD doesn't show up in your, your analysis, at least at the time then. And shrooms was only about a three-day thing. If they were actually looking for it, they weren't looking for shrooms. They had to be looking for one of the byproducts that you could tell if shrooms was in your system. But they didn't test for that. Not regularly, anyway. <clears throat> so I'm at my apartment one day, and one of the guys comes over and goes, Hey, Robert, want to go shroom picking? And I'm like, Fuck yeah, I want to do shrooms, you know, but I'm, I tell them, but I don't know what to pick or where to go or, you know, I'd be less than useful. I mean, as far as I know, mushroom picking for just like edible mushrooms is one of the most dangerous fucking things you can ever do, much less trying to find mushrooms to get high, you know, and that grows in cow shit. Yeah, that has to be healthy or good for you, especially first time not knowing what to pick. And he's like, no, no, I'll show you what to get. And okay, I agree. And we hop in my car because I have to be the one driving, of course. And uh, you know, Gulfport, there's like one highway that runs along the beach, and there's one highway that goes north. Okay, we take the highway that goes north, and we take that north about 20 minutes, but from the from CBC. So let's. You know, about 10 minutes out of town, past the Walmart and everything out past that way. And there's a cemetery on the left. Just a small, like, country cemetery. You know, I don't know how many people were there. It's less than a 10-acre place. There was a little white farmhouse next to the road on the south side of it, the cemetery. And there, the back row of the cemetery fence fenced off and there's a big cow pasture here and basically it was the farmer's house I had a cemetery next to him and cows everywhere else. Well, previously people had gotten in trouble because they were dumbasses and went out there at night and tried sneaking around at night looking for shrooms. Because if you don't know shrooms, these, these type of shrooms anyway, grow on the top of cow shit and they grow on the top of cow shit at night or very early in the morning, you know, like 4 a.m. when it's still fucking dark out and wet out. It's when the dew settles on everything, they pop up or something. not a mushroomologist. So, our idea 
my friend's idea actually, what he said was, you go out early in the morning because then it looks like you're visiting the fucking graves of someone and it's okay and no one harasses you. So we go there and it's like 9.30, 10 a.m. And we're like, well, what are we going to put these in if we pick some shrooms? And the only thing I had was two plastic MTV cups from Taco Bell. They were like the extra large soda drinks and they were made by MTV. That's all I remember. They were supposed to be collector's cups, but you know, it was just a big deal. They were pushing them and I was like, cool, free glasses, you know, and they're plastic, but you know, they were a little thicker than they make them now. And so we had four of those, two for me, two for him. And we're like, well, he's like, if we can fill these cups up, we'll be doing fucking excellent. You know, we'll be able to make two cups of tea. We'll get fucking high and trip well all day today, which was like a Saturday, and probably trip into Sunday too off of that much tea. Okay, cool. And I'm telling him, you know, I don't know what the fuck to pick at all. And he's like, I'll, I'll teach you, I'll show you. It's, it's easy once you learn. Okay, so we go out there and we drive, go into the cemetery. The cemetery has the little gravel roads that go off in between. There's like three of them. I mean, it's really small and it tees back through. I we pull off on one of them, park. We get out, we pretend like we're looking at the graves and stuff. We're really looking at the farmhouse over here. There's no activity. There's no curtains moving. There's no lights on. There's no sound. There's no cars. Nah, we don't even know if they were home that day. They could have been gone for all we know, which was great. Because we go over, hop over the fence, and there's cows like at the other end of the pasture. And it goes downhill a little bit, and there were some trees in this part downhill. And under the trees is where there's a bunch of cow shit, and because it's still shaded, there's still shrooms growing there under the trees. That's the key. So we go down there, and, and I pick up the first mushroom I see and ask him, is this it? And he's like, no. Okay, is this it? No. Is this it? No. Well, what am I looking for? And then he describes them that there would be two types. One will look like a bullet, and one will look like a nipple. And I'm like, what? You're fucking kidding me. He goes, bullets and nipples. You know what bullets look like. I'm like, well, yeah, I'm in the fucking military. Of course I know what bullets look like. And he goes, and nipples. You know what nipples look like. Well, yeah, I've got, just got back from deployment in the Philippines. Seen more nipples than other people see in their lifetime. So I'm like, yeah, seen a lot. And he's like, okay, it will look like bullets or nipples. And I'm like, okay, well, is this one? No. Is this one? I'm back to the no, no, no. Finally, <clears throat> grab one that's, you know, bullet-shaped. It's narrow, bullet-shaped. The top half is looks copper, and the bottom part is lighter in color, which would be the brass, and it's about the size of an M16 bullet. And, and I'm like, huh, is this it? He's like, yes, that's a bullet. I'm like, oh, well, yeah, it looks just like a bullet. I'm looking at there's, it wasn't red with white dots. It didn't have no purple frill line underneath. There's no purple things. It looked like a fucking bullet. Okay, put in the cup. And back to this, is this it? No, is this it? No, is this it? No. You know, he's just madly picking up, finding them all the fuck over. And finally, is this one? Yes, that's a nipple. And I look at it and I'm like, Motherfucker, it looks exactly like a human nipple. It's got the, the raised part in the middle, and, and that's darker, and a little bit around it's darker, and then it's pale, and it's got the little dark edge with bumps on the edge. And I'm like, God damn it, it looks like a nipple. I want to suck on that one, you know, put down a big titty. And flip it over, there's no purple ring again. and. No red dots or any of that shit that they show in the pictures of shrooms. It wasn't picking those ones, obviously. And so have the nipple. Okay, put that in the cup. That's it? Yes. Wow, I got one right. Uh, There's another nipple. Ah, I'm real good at finding nipples, let me tell you. I found all them at like many feet away. I can spot them out real quick. And then the bullets, I get a little harder. I figured out the bullets are just unopened nipples. 
You know, once you figure that out, then ah, the bullets are easy to find because they're also titties. Well, nipples. You know, so we end up filling up our cups in like, oh, five, ten minutes. Then I had my t-shirt bowed all the way out like this, and we're just packing them in. And our t-shirts are just stretched the fuck out because we don't care. They're military green shirts, you know. Let's pack the fuck in. And got that, and his is the same way. And we go back to the car and... Of course, you know, what the fuck am I going to do with, you know. So I'd go digging through the trunk and find some grocery bags, the paper grocery bags. And we put them in that. I put mine in one bag. He puts his in another bag. So we got two pound paper bags full of shrooms. All right. Now what? Well, he goes, you can't eat them raw. <coughs> it is safe. You will start to trip quicker. It won't be as intense as making tea and drinking it. And just don't eat the brown, the dirt on the bottom. Because it's not dirt, it's shit. It's cow shit. They groan in shit. If you're wondering what a raw shroom tastes like, it tastes like shit. Because it's grown in shit. But of course, you know, I had to eat a few of them on the way back to base in my apartment. Because why not? I'm not going to pass up the opportunity of that, you know. Didn't even think that we could have been picking the wrong thing and... I'm eating death caps the whole fucking way back. But anyway, I ate like three of them. We drive back to my apartment, cut off the, the poop end of the stems, rinse them off real quick, and take the largest fucking pot that I have. Uh, as it was one of those tall pots, you know, so it was really tall and like this big around and shiny. They're cheap, thin, you know, but it's mainly just a stew type pot. So put them all in there and added like two cups of water. So this thing's just full with just a little bit of water at the bottom because I've sauteed and cooked mushrooms before. I know how to do mushrooms. I cook them a lot. You can see them on my other channel, Real Easy Cooking with Robert. Um, so if you've had just a little bit of water in them, the mushrooms will cook down and cook down and cook down and he's telling me that the key to making good shroom tea is you have to slowly marinate it for hours. The longer you, you marinate it, let it slowly simmer and cook, stew, that the, the chemicals you're looking for leach out of the mushrooms into the water. And so then you just got to keep adding more water and keep it going. And so we cooked it for... Well, it was on very, very low, low heat, just, just enough to, I mean, we brought it to a, a low, to a simmer, and then we just turned it to a very low heat and evaporated it down for, oh, like six hours till we got it down to the liquid that filled two MTV cups. So to put this in perspective, imagine two grocery bags, paper grocery bags, full of shrooms, fresh shrooms, condensed down and watered and re-evaporated down into two 32-ounce cups. So 64 ounces of liquid. Yeah. <laughs> and there's still a few shrooms in there, too. You know, they're in there because might as well. They went as we dripped them in. And he's like, yeah, you can still aim. They're a little gross, but they'll turbocharge your, your trip. Okay. So... Palms up, chug this shit down, and yeah, it tastes like shit water. Still grown in shit, tastes like shit. Even if you clean the shit off, they taste like shit. And so we're drinking this down. Ugh, 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 God, it's terrible. And I'm watching TV, and I'll never forget what was playing was Star Trek The Next Generation. It was the episode where Tasha Yar dies. You know, by the ooze monster whoever comes out and kills her but as a, the shrooms start to hit me i'm watching this and you know everyone's seen this episode many times it's in syndicate and i'm like wow this show just looks so fake i mean it didn't look like the show anymore it looked like they were standing on a sound stage it looked like they were just badly acting reading lines like they were just damn near holding scripts it was just, it made British, British sci-fi look cutting edge. 
you know, that's how, and I'm just like, wow. Okay, well, evidently this is really starting to hit me now because I know this show, typically for at the time, had good special effects. So, I'm like, all right, I'm about done with my cup. And he's like, yeah, you can eat the mushrooms. Don't eat the mushrooms. It's fucking disgusting. It's hard to chew them. They've been boiled for and simmered for hours, and they're cold now. And it tastes, and the tea is like bad tea that, like, if you leave the tea bags in for, for hours, you know, it's like over teed flavor cooked. And the the shrooms we has to be just like eating. It reminded me of like eating cold human flesh. That's all I could think of. I mean, it's I feel this is what eating cold human flesh must taste like. Nope, I'm grossed out by this, you know. So as we're there and the TV's no longer you know, entertaining me, you know, the show looks faker and fake and terrible. Like I'd rather watch Barney. Um, we pulled out my game system then. I had an old, uh, old Nintendo NES that we just, I bought from one of the pawn shops and bought some games from it there. We plug one in, and we're playing it. I don't know. It was like Defender or something, flying in space, shooting, and we we played that for about 10, 15 minutes, maybe a half hour, and then we just couldn't concentrate on the game no more. You know, it's not that the TV changed or anything. It's just that my attention span to sit and play a video game, my desire was zero, and to go anywhere was zero. Watch TV? Nope. Well, what do you want to do, Robert? Well, we're sitting on the floor. I'm just going to lay back, look at the ceiling, listen to the Pink Floyd music playing, and close my eyes and see where I go. And what happens? You know, because normally you close your eyes and images just start flashing in your head of crazy shit, especially when you take acid, because I've done a lot of blotter before, and it's just... Hardcore images flashing, most of them not happy core, and that's why I could never sleep, and boom, I'm wide awake. Well, this one, I'm like, huh, I wonder. And it wasn't, I mean, the images flashed, but it wasn't mean, evil, dark images. There was, like, happy flowers, and then suddenly I was, like, floated through the apartment into space and shot out of the atmosphere into space past Jupiter, Saw that thing go by and pass, I don't know what other planets and shit, maybe it was Neptune or something, they were boring. It wasn't Saturn, because that one would be cool. Shot past all them, and suddenly I'm like, in, like, out of the solar system, I saw the Milky Way exceeding, and went farther, farther, I mean like Stargate type things, you're, you're flying so far away. And then stopped, and I'm in space, floating around there, and I see a space creature that's like, looked like a giant flower, like a dandelion flower doing this, but it wasn't a dandelion, and the leaves were in sharp points, like, and there was like eight or nine of them, and they're going like that, and that was its, somehow its propulsion in space, and I wasn't sure if it was fully ascent or just a mindless creature sucking up space dust, but it's there. And then I was like, wow, this is really neat and unexpected. And I mean, it's sure, probably hallucination dream, but it was realer than real. And then suddenly, boom, back on the floor going, wow, that was something else. Uh, I saw space creatures. I went for a trip and never left the fucking farm, man. That was the most farthest way out of body experience trip on, on shrooms. You know, then we just walked around the apartment complex, did our stuff, watched TV. You know, it was a great fucking trip and everything's all happy colors moving and everything for the next 12 hours. It was great. That's how I learned how to pick shrooms. So. If you ever get the chance, always visit a cow pasture underneath 
the trees and look for nipples or bullets. Wow, I love the nipples. And with that, puff puff pass, no park on grass, I'm out of here. Motherfucker, it looks exactly like a human nipple. It's got the, the raised part in the middle and, and that's darker and a little bit around it's darker and then it's pale and it's got the little dark edge with bumps on the edge. And I'm like, God damn it, it looks like a nipple. I want to suck on that one, you know, put down a big titty. And 